Hold up. Hey yo, Finn here and welcome back to another episode of Doki Doki Literature Club. So um, as you can see, just switched back to my old webcam is because I am having problems with my new webcam right now. I don't know why, uh, it's because it's a little bit laggy now and I don't know how to fix it. So um, for the meantime, I'm just going to use my old webcam right now and uh, yeah, and is this, is this a little bit too bright? I can't. I, I really can't tell, but anywho, if it's, if this one's too bright for you, then I don't know. I might have to fix this after this episode or something like that. But yeah, gotta get some extra lighting if you know what I mean. I guess fi fix that. There you go. So uh, yeah, um, like I said in my previous Minecraft video, that I'll be uploading double or two videos a day. So. I wasn't able to start recording today is because I'm having problems with my PC and uh, right now I just gotten started recording right now so um, yeah um, before I begin this episode be sure to leave a like share it with a friend and of course if you're new to the channel please subscribe really does help me out and um, yeah <laughs> I, I, I just uh, fix that a little bit there we go so um, yeah um, you guys know what time it is. <laughs> what time is it? It's Doki Doki time. Alright, looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Alright. Ugh. I hear Natsuki utter an expirated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach to her in case she needs a hand. You're looking for something in there? Freaking Monica. She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point of keeping your collection organized if someone else is gonna mess it up? Natsuki slides a bunch of stack books and boxes across the shelf. Manga. You read manga, right? Ah, sometimes. Manga is one of th those things where you can't admit you're really into it until you figure out where the other person stands. How'd you know anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. <laughs> Fun fact guys, yes, I read manga, especially in real life, but the only manga I read in person is just Nisekoi, so yeah, just it's, it's just Nisekoi, forgive me, but I read the whole thing, and especially at the anime, but I haven't read the others like Dr. Stone or The Promised Neverland, but <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'll get more into that in another video, I guess, or not, I don't know, if you guys want me to talk about anime, I guess. Besides, it's kind of kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? I see. There's a lone volume of manga amidst a stack of various books on the once on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There it is. Natsuki snatch, snatches it out of my hand. She then turns into a, bo a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ah, much better. Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most in irritating sight in the world. I know how I know that feel. Get a closer look at the box set she's admiring. Parfait girls? The series I never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either weight of my demographic or it's ter simply terrible. If you're gonna judge, you can go do it through the glass on that door. She points to the classroom door. Hey, I wasn't judging or any. I wasn't judging it anything. I didn't say anything. That's one of. What's the two words? Parfait girls. Um, it reminds me of that one show, I guess. What was it? Blend S. E, that kind of counts. All right, but I'll tell you one thing, Finn. Consider this a lesson straight from Literature Club. Don't judge a book by its cover. In fact. Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm gonna show you exactly why. She shoves the, bo the book right into my hands. Ah, stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful, colorful attire, striking animated feminine poses. I, I, I cannot tell if it's from Blend S, but that's a nice nod. It's exceedingly moe. Don't just stand there. Hua. 
Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. She then takes a seat against a wall beneath the window sills. She pats on the ground next to her, signal signaling me to sit there. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs won't work. You can't read at the same time like that. Eh, why's that? Ah, I guess it's easier to be closer like this. <laughs> Don't just say that. Don't make me feel weird about it. Natsuki f crosses her arms and scooches an inch away from me. Sorry. I didn't exactly expect to be sitting this closer to her either. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again itches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I won't notice. I can hear her per peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Well, how long has it been I, s I read the beginning? Hmm? You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? Not really. Maybe sometimes after I or I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Uh, I am, but nothing's really happened yet, so I can't talk at the same time. Looks like it's a bunch. It looks like it's a bunch of friends in high school. Typical slice of life affair. <laughs> All right, let me uh, save that there. <laughs> slice of life. That's actually a pretty good. Uh, anime genre I really enjoy slice of life in anime shows actually like I said um, if you've been following my social media I've been watching Jojo's Bizarre Adventure and right now I'm Stardust Crusaders so I guess that kind of counts I kind of grew out of these since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot so what should I expect from this is there going to be plot well obviously you think I would enjoy something that didn't have a plot? I mean, well, I guess I know what you're saying. A lot of the beginning is about simple things. Like, there's a really funny chapter where they're obsessed with a guy at the ice cream shop. But that just helps you get to know the characters. Besides, it's still entertaining. But later on, there are all kinds of drama. Like, when they get into their backstories and when some of the romance starts to happen, that's really what makes it so good. And there are many touching parts. Okay. Ah, it's that, is that so? It sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. <laughs> hey, wait. What's that supposed to mean? What? Natsuki gives me a little shove. I just meant that I haven't se yet seen you at your full power. <laughs> good save. Ah, this chapter seems like it's about baking. This is just a guess, but is there a lot of baking in this manga? Well, Natsuki pauses for a moment as if she doesn't want to admit something. Yeah, why does that matter? It doesn't, I was just curious, since you enjoy ba baking too, right? That's, that's just a coincidence. I just happened to get into baking around the same time I got this manga. Like, I would ever get into anything because it's in a manga. I feel bad for anyone that impressionable. <laughs> Definitely not a coincidence. Oops. There. Yeah, you can see me? Good. I guess that explains Natsuki's interest in baking. Still, of all the hobbies to pick up from a manga, that's definitely one of the better ones. Not to mention, she's really good at it, so who am I to judge? Oh! Hello. I don't know how to uh, take this thing off. I don't know this. This. All right. Never mind that. I am not going to get into that one. But that. We read on for a few more minutes. I finished a couple of chapters at this point. Uh, are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not. Even though you're just watching me read. W well, I'm fine with that. If you say so, I guess it's fun sharing something you like with someone else. I always get some. I always get excited when I convince any of my friends to pick up a pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Hmm. Hmm. You don't? Um. That's not. 
Oh, look at her face. That's a, it's a adorable face there, I guess. Well, I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Could you not rub it in? Jeez. Ah, sorry. Hmm. Like I, like I could ever get my friends to read this. Aww. <laughs> they just think manga is for kids. Manga is for kids. Okay. Manga is for kids. I mean, sure. There are different kinds of manga out there. Just like anime, there are different kinds. Like, of course, for the um, for the grown-ups and for the kids, there's a difference. So, don't judge me on that one because I'm pretty sure some other otakus or weeps out there already know about this. I can't even bring up bring it up without them being all like, Eh? You still haven't grown out of that yet? Makes me want to punch them. I'll be honest with you, that's 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 actually kinda true. I mean really that's really kinda true, so um yeah, I just want to punch them in the face for like being like like look at this. See this? See this Madoka Figma here? Yep. This this is my this is mine, alright? This is thirteen years old. This is mine, alright? This is not intently for kids and stuff, okay? This is not for kids, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. Like, like, bruh. You really think that this here is for kids, alright? <laughs> I'm, I'm not joking. I'm not joking. This show ain't for kids. Uh, I know those kinds of people. Well said, well said. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge. Much less friends who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitated toward the other losers over time. But it's probably harder for someone like you. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? I mean, I... F I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Except Monica was kind of a jerk about it. Uh, I can't. I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Maybe, but at least you're enjoying yourself, right? Uh, uh. So, <laughs> jeez, that's enough. Are you gonna keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. Flip the page. Suddenly, Natsuki starts laughing. <laughs> oh, that's a cute face. That's a cute face of hers. <laughs> again, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get killed by my, girlf by my girlfriend by this, but again, it's just a game, but who, who knows? I totally forgot that happens. Not to keep puts her finger in one of the pan panels. Minoru is my favorite character. You always feel like you always feel a little bad for her since she's so unlucky, but it gets especially bad when. Ooh, I shouldn't be talking about that yet. Just finish this chapter. Natsuki vo Natsuki's voice sparkles with excitement. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, let me just uh take a obligatory water break. I'm I'm sorry. My nose is my nose is still kind of no nosy and stuff. I guess I don't know. But. Excuse me. Alright, back to the game, so <laughs> it's a stark contrast to her unusual to her usual bossy tone. Where she's not used to sharing her favorite manga with her friends, I can understand why. It's hard to express in words a feeling you get when connecting with someone like that. And being able to provide that to Nazuki, for whom it's a rare experience. The thought makes me smile a little to yourself. Okay everyone. Eh? Let me just fix that again. Sorry. Are you all ready with today's poems? Uh... Oh, come on! <coughs> Alright then, I stand up. I return to where I put my stuff and carefully slip the book into my bag. Who should I show my poem first? Of course, it would be Natsuki. I mean, Sayori. Finn, I really love your poems. I can't believe you're, you've been hiding these from me. And I'm not hiding anything. 
but your poems are so good yesterday's and this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so... Eh? No way! Not even Natsuki? Ugh, excuse me. Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something, but I don't think that it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess it's... I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. <laughs> Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just meant that you're really... That you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? My, <laughs> write poems about my own stupid life. How... <laughs> Alright, I, I, I think I'm gonna take notes here. I think I should make one, I guess. I don't know, maybe at the end of the video or something. I, I, I don't know. We'll see. That you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. <sighs> you never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> hey, I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Maybe. Sayori starts filling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Finn. Will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well... It's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> oh, Sayori, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> uh, are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Snap. Ah, I broke my pencil. Sayori hastily bends up and bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being unattentive of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. S sorry, I... Oh, oh. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sorry, clutches the desk before uh, beside her to support herself. He's shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Sayori. Yeah, I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. Where it's not good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Oh. Bottles, I pop off my scalp like a lid in the cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep my dreams. Moon balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a little like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bowl to keep it safe. I put the bowl on the shelf with all her with all the other bowls. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in in bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me makes me a lot of friends. Each well, a starlight to make amends. Sometimes a friend feels a certain way. Down to down, down comes to a ball to save the day. Nope. Dang it! I missed it. Frick. Uh, frick. H hold on, guys. Let me uh, let me fix that real quick. Hello, hello, <laughs> hello, guys. Can you see me? Can you see me right now? Okay. <laughs> All right. I know I'm not I'm I'm not streaming guys right I'm just saying just just making sure everything else is fine so all right back to the poem that I missed that I missed so uh, all right night after night more dreams friend after friend more bubbles deeper and deeper my fingers go like exploring a dark cave discovering the secrets hiding in the nukes and crannies digging and digging scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and come in and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf one after the other. Holding them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle, but every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. 
They are shouting, pleading, something. All I can hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Oh my. Holy crap. Holy... I don't know. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the po best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out so it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like I feel like it was meant to express myself this way. Excuse me, right second. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep up, keep it up. Yeah, writing's writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Um. Okay. Sayori has always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Next one is Natsuki. Uh, Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. I'm just supposed to be bad at this. Is that a compliment? No, I mean, you know. Natsuki struggles to find the words she wants. I just expected a lot, a lot less after what you showed me yesterday. That's all. Well, I guess I just got lucky with this one. Yeah, exactly. You just got lucky, you know. Don't get used to it. You won't always manage to write poems this cute. I mean, well, I mean, well written. No, I mean, ah, so that's how it is. My poem is cute. No, why are you smiling? It's not like I like cute things. Natsuki shoves my poem back towards me. Huh, reading it again, I decided it's not so great after all. It's too cute and doki doki. <laughs> uh, breaking the fourth wall, eh, Natsuki? Okay then. <laughs> it would only impress, you know, girls who like those kind of things. <laughs> For some reason, Natsuki is incredibly easy to see through. Well, anyway, you're gonna read mine now, right? Judging by your tastes, I, you'll probably like it a lot. You'll be, you'll probably learn some too. Don't forget who the real pro is. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends talk about talk, start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. Doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. Doesn't matter if she keeps it private. Doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I gotta tell <laughs> Oh... Amy loves spiders. <laughs> That's an interesting poem, I'd say. <laughs> Not bad, right? It's quite longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's is way too short. Save that again, I guess. I was just warming up. Hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. It helps people realize how stupid they're being. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. 
Do you know how? Do you, do you know people like that? Of course, it's about everyone thinks my. That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be it easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people found find out they made fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares so who cares what peop someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people really need to re learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely like right. At least I can relate to that, and I'm sure a lot of people a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. All right. As for liking weird things, I mean, I have a tendency to collect action figures, as you can see here. Like, like really, action figures. As you can see, my uh, my favorite figures are in front of me, so. I have, I have weird things sometimes, but, well, that's just part of life. I mean, you like what you like, that makes you happy, so just ignore what others think of you. So, yeah, just, just, just whatever you like just makes you happy. So, you like what you like, that what makes you, that what makes you happy or something. So, yeah, you like what you like, it's, it's yours, not theirs. So, if you judge me, I'll kill you. Like really, I'll I'll, I'll 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 kill you. Like really, so <laughs> I I'm joking. I'm I won't kill you. Just again, uh, you have your different things and stuff after in life. So just just be that way. All right. Next is Yuri. Ah, is it my turn? Let's see how it compares to yesterday's. Hmm. I see. It's a bit different. I respect you for trying different things, Finn. Were you inspired by Natsuki's poem? Or Sayori's, perhaps? Well, I guess you could say that. I thought so. I thought so. I am happy for you. You don't need to, in to find inspiration in my poems. I write them for myself, not for anyone else. So I don't really need for people to like them or anything. Yuri! Eh? I'm sorry for being blunt, but you're overthinking this a little. Just because our styles are different doesn't mean I dislike your poems. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Burp. In fact, if I tried to do something in your style, I would probably just do a durable job. I see. I'm sorry, but my stupid mind it likes to do that sometimes. Anyway, you don't need to be afraid to be a little bit more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see you into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise, I see. That's a inter certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course, this is the poem we wrote for today. Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of the night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scat scattering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an or unorder unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious, well aware of the consequences, well aware that the raccoon is, that is fed will always come back for more. My enticing beauty f of my cutting knife is the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon incre increase increments its phase, I don't know how to say that, and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taking, taken to following me. You could see that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish, 
my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic, a Pav 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 Pavlovian Pavlovian conditioning. I sense the bread, and I fed and I feed myself again. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that it's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know; it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this is, what this poem is about. That's right. So a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using a poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face val face value, then I can't figure out how, out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate in relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Huh? Didn't Atsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Eh? She, she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She, she's right. Ah, I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the pers the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Ah, please don't tell her I said that. Ah, don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing with with me. After all, if I haven't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Of course, I'm a good listener, guys. So. Last one, Monica. Hi again, Finn. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that, as long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You'll never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. Take my, I give my poem to Monica. Alright, I like it, Finn. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> oh jeez. No, no. This kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. And she's a good writer too, so take that as a compliment. <laughs> if you say so. Yep. By any chance, have you read anything by Shiel Silverstein? Eh? Maybe a long time ago. He's famous for telling all kinds of stories in just a few simple words. His poems can be funny, enduring, or even sad. And sometimes they're only a few lines long. They might even feel like they're written for kids, but if you think about them, they can express views of the world that would apply to anybody. I see. So you're saying that Natsuki is kind of like that? Sort of. Maybe she's not an expert, but you probably won't find much filler in her poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get, through, to get the meaning through. So I can see why it would be your kind of poem to explore. But anyway, want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright colors, bright beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, and piercing. Cine cuisine tangent like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Load me. Alright. <laughs> That's a lot of spaces back there. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just, a ne it's just the kind of thing I never really seen before, I guess. It's, it's kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines that are really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's, what it's about though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. 
or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You'll never know when you change your mind or when something unexpected may happen. Okay, sure. Wait, is this t tip about writing? Oops. Ah, oh, darn it! I I accidentally <laughs> accidentally spit on my uh, my my monitor. Let me uh, clean that one. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, I think we're getting a little bit somewhere here. What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if could, so if everyone could come, sit in the front of the room. This is about the festival. Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's like it's not like we can put together anything good in, uh, in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last-minute preparations. Don't worry so much, we're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on the posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Alright, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be, to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P uh, Monica? Yeah, we're going to have a poetry performance. Each of us... Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up to recite the poems too. So here is putting up all on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Hehe, <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh, well, I did. You really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to performing to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I will, could never in my life do something like that. Imagine it. it. <laughs> Yori shakes her head in fear. Guys, no Sayori, I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never showed the poems with anyone until a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to ask the poems out aloud to a whole group, room of full people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry, mm. but I, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put a good performance, then, it'll then it will inspire others to do the same. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah. It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right, and, th and it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that, every that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if, and if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Um, Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. To think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ooh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll have to get it over with. Alright. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Um... Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. Uh, I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. Alright, you know what? Let me, uh, let me, uh, pause. Let me just stop this episode for you guys now, so... Yeah, I'll just um, 
save that, I guess, so... Yeah, we'll definitely end it here. Well then, another Doki Doki Literature Club episode for you guys, and um... I guess we're definitely getting a little bit... A little bit... Somewhere here, as what Monica said during the um... The poem segment, so spoiler alert, I guess we're almost to that part. So, um, anywho, um, I know I've been lacking content, so th this is also the best I can do as well, so please forgive me. And, um, yeah, so, um, I hope you guys enjoy watching this episode. And, um, if you want to see more Doki Doki Literature Club or any more anime stuff, or of course, more, more Minecraft stuff, so, um, like I said in the beginning, be sure to leave a like, share it with a friend, and of course, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, it really does help me out, and click on the bell notification on what videos I upload. So, um, yeah, uh, thank you guys all so much for watching. Stay awesome, love you all, Finn the Diamond Knight signing off. See you guys next time.